Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. So I'm looking on my phone to make sure that this is working. Um, this way I can check for messages and comments. And I hope that you guys come and leave lots of comments. If you are watching this as a replay, please comment hashtag replay so I know where you come from. And um, and I can like reach out to you, say hello, that kind of thing. So hello and welcome today. I am talking about Facebook groups. And what's cool is I'm going live right now in my Facebook group. And I think it is a really a powerful tool for my business, but also just as a way to connect. So I recorded my most recent podcast episode. In fact, let me put a link to that. So hold on. Um, was all about building Facebook groups and, and what is the point of a Facebook group, say, versus a Facebook page and how to think about them differently because they are they're different beasts. Okay, here is the link. Okay, so I interviewed a woman named Christina John Dolly, and she has a, a business called Deliver Your Genius, and she's a business coach, and she really uses her Facebook group in a very strategic sort of way. I started this Facebook group as a way to have a continuation of the conversation from the podcast, like today, right? So I can go live with it. I can let it kind of marinate for a while. I can see what people are saying about it. And then I can come on live and say, hey, here are the biggest learnings, lessons, things that I believe are true. And I can then share them with you. And what's really cool is I feel like there's this casual vibe in the Facebook group. It's like low pressure. And you guys get to see I'm a real person. I get to see you and what you're struggling with. I share what I'm struggling with. Um, and so for me, I love this Facebook group. And weirdly, I love it more than connecting with people on Instagram. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just like old school. Anyway, what I thought was really interesting about my conversation with Christina was that she said this, and I, I thought this, but like she articulated it really well. Your page on Facebook is like your storefront, but your Facebook group is really where people are interacting and you can build a community. So if that is a part of your business, I do recommend you use your Facebook page, but really, um, it's not the place for conversation and Facebook groups are the place for conversation. If you guys have a Facebook group, put it in the comments because I'd love to check it out, join your group, see what you're doing in your group. So that was one thing that I thought was super clear. I love the idea of a storefront versus like a place for people to interact with each other where you're kind of like the master of ceremonies in your group, like leading the discussion, but it's really a way for people to interact with each other. The other thing that she talked about that I hadn't thought about are the different roles of people in your group. A lot of times we just look at the people who are commenting or liking, but there are other types of people in your group. So she called them the likers, the people who like your page, you know, like your posts, that kind of thing, and the people who comment. Then there is a whole subset of lurkers Oh, Teresa, hello, welcome, welcome. Um, so then there are the people, Teresa, what are you in groups and what do you notice in your group? Tell me if you agree with this. So there are the people who like and comment, but that's probably a small group of people who show up a lot. And then there are the people who are lurking, who are in there, but don't necessarily feel comfortable uh, speaking out, but these people are also really important. And then she talked about the cheerleaders. These are the people who will go like you go, and not just to me, but to the people in the community who will cheer everybody on. I love those people. Um, and then there are the people who are the connectors, and you could be in more than one category. But like the connectors are the people who see somebody has a need, like let's say somebody says, I need somebody to design a logo for me and somebody else goes, I know the right person. And those are the connectors, pulling people together. And then, and I don't have a lot of people like this in my group, the policers, the ones who kind of make sure that people are following the rules. Okay, so Teresa, 
I'm going to put your comment up. So Teresa, you say, yes, so true. And I may be accused of being a worker. Ooh, on occasion. Okay. What do you mean by being a worker on occasion? Uh, so share about that because I'd love to know. Okay. So anyway, I thought that was a really neat way of thinking about your group. You can't just focus on the people. If, if people aren't necessarily liking or commenting, you can't assume that the other people aren't participating in, in, a, in a different way. A lurker. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I too am a lurker, probably the most. I tend not to be super interactive. I think it's my personality as an introvert, um, but it doesn't mean that I'm not reading or absorbing or learning in different groups. So I, I totally get it. Okay. Then one thing that's great about a Facebook group is it's a place to establish your authority. And I definitely think that for me, I've got my podcast and then again, I get to come in here and show hopefully a different side um, of me, I hope, or maybe it's the same side. I don't know, but it's just a way for me to just continue talking about stuff. And usually on my podcast, I'm interviewing a guest and here I get to kind of interact with you directly. And I personally, I really love that. But the question is, how much time does it take to have a Facebook group? Now, for the last week or two, I have been in building mode. I'm going to talk about that. I'm working on a course, a WordPress course. Uh, we taught this live and I've decided to turn it into a course. And it has been a learning curve. And I've been off, really focused on that. And I noticed that when I, this is something like I know about myself, when I'm in like building mode, I kind of go inward. And then I come out and then I'm like, out into the world. And I've noticed I therefore have been less active on social media or even in this group, just because I'm kind of internal. This is how, how I do things. When I'm building, I get quiet and I have to kind of be listening to myself and my own um, job. So, okay. So somebody said, and let me know who this is because, because of, let's see if I can, I can see on my, um, in here in my Facebook group. Right. Hold on. Yeah, this might not be good. Okay. Yes, it can seem like a full time job. And that is one of the possible downsides, as we all know. Okay, Nikki, you said this. Yes. Nikki, do you have a, a Facebook group? And if so, which is it? Because let's see. As we all know. Oh, okay. I don't Nikki, want that. You said this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Nikki. Okay. So your luxury family travel, that is your Facebook group. Okay. So this is the thing that um, Christina talked about. And I think that I need to learn this as well. And she called something this, which I thought was really good, an engagement bubble. And, um, and Nikki, I want to know, would you put in a comment what uh, kind of like what your goal is of your Facebook group, because that was something that Christina really focused on, that you can get into something called an engagement bubble, which is you're putting out content in your group. And that can be like you on a treadmill where you're feeding your group all this content for free and not, and, and not finding a way to get customers from your Facebook group. I always say that if that I think a Facebook group is awesome, like I just love you and I love this group and it feels really personal to me. And it's such a group of like kind hearted people. So this is weirdly like my happy place. Okay. Build relationships. And here, let's see. Build relationships, prove we are industry experts to eventually book trips for these members. Okay, Nikki, how has that been? Are you able to get somebody, this is what we talk about in the podcast episode, get somebody from being like a contributor or community member to being a buyer. And what Christina was talking about is how you have to map out that, that journey and that it doesn't just magically happen. I think, you know, I talk about this a lot on my podcast. 
I think that people think, okay, you know, you're just going to like start a blog and then money's going to just fly through the windows without you having to really put a monetization strategy in place. One that is very well thought out. I think the same thing is true about a Facebook group, which is, it is like, okay, what is somebody's going to come to my group and have I done the thinking behind the scenes on how to get somebody kind of through my sales funnel or provide value, but with a goal attached to it. Because I too started this group and I'm like, great, it'll be extension of the podcast um, and a great way for me to like talk to my audience or for them to talk to me. But in terms of like, how do I monetize this? Ooh, I have like, I'm going to talk about like my WordPress uh, course and make that an experience for people in my group, for this group. But it was really Christina who was like, you need to be really intentional about that. Like you need to do a challenge in your group. And at the end of it is maybe the WordPress course, but it's not like just popping in with lots of free content and then every so often popping in and selling something because it's confusing to your community. And that I thought was like one of those moments to go, oh, I need to step back and I need to think about what is this journey? So Nikki, have you thought about that beyond the, you know, I always say like Instagram can be incredibly powerful for your business, but it's really easy on Instagram to get caught in this cycle of just putting out content, putting out content and not having a strategy for how to monetize Instagram because Instagram by itself just doesn't monetize. Even if you have a hundred thousand followers, you've got to be very intentional. So Christina calls this, I love this, the engagement bubble where you just are cranking out content, trying to serve an audience, but really in an amorphous sort of way. And I am planning to be even more intentional in this group for my business so that it's not just like this ad hoc thing and eventually I'll figure it out. I think that whenever I go, eventually I'll figure it out. I kind of don't figure it out because I think it takes stepping back and mapping out a path. So let me know if that makes sense to you. But that was really, I feel like the word that I use all the time here in my podcast, in my business is when I'm teaching, Teresa, I'm sure you've heard this, intentionality, really thinking through. And it's hard. It's harder to come up with your sales plan or your free challenge or whatever that is than it is to like pop in with like a cool quote or, you know, just a little like something like, like a photo of you and like what you're thinking about or who knows, like that's easy. I mean, it can be tiring. You can feel like you're on a treadmill, but what's harder is to step back and go, what are the stages that I need to walk my community through where I'm providing real value, where I believe in what I'm selling, I know it will make your life better, but how do I tell you that story? How do I put all the pieces together? My emails, uh, my blog posts, uh, com- becoming, you know, going live and all that. Okay, so wait, let's see. Here we go. I think this is you, Nikki. I'd like to be more intentional with a funnel. We've started to collect email addresses for new members like to create an email funnel for, yes. And so again, this is where I recommend you get off of the treadmill for a week or so, maybe two, maybe three, and really spend time. And it hurts, like it hurts to go, what would that look like? How can I build that out in the easiest way possible? Doing B minus work, because ultimately your job is to iterate. You're going to learn the first time. It might not go the way you want. And then you go, okay, well, this didn't connect, but maybe this messaging did connect. And you start to build that way. And I think that that is really hard. In our businesses, we are constantly just like feeding the machine, as I like to call it. Oh, I've got a, you know, for me, new podcast coming up on Wednesday, catch my party. We've got three posts going live. Uh, I come live here on Mondays. I've got to create images for whatever. I got to book guests for my podcast. Like uh, we're working on Milo Tree. We're working on a new product. Like there are so many things that I can stay busy with. It is really hard to carve out that time to step back and go, what does this really look like? What does my funnel look like? How do I build out the individual pieces? Like I, as I'm talking to you guys, I'm getting this idea of I think I need to 
map something out where I can help lead people in this community in building out very small ways to set funnels up. Um, because then what you do is you set it up really small and kind of, again, B minus, and then you go back and you build out other pieces of your business. You go deeper here. You know, you look at somebody like Amy Porterfield and you're like, oh my God, I could never do that. Like all these moving parts and they all fit together really well. And all her e emails are perfect. And her courses, like, how could I ever build that? And what you realize is that that's been years in the making. You know, that didn't come fully, fully uh, delivered, fully packaged. It's like you just do one little chunk and then another little chunk and then you just keep iterating. So that I want to that I guess, you know, it's funny after doing this Facebook Live, it's like giving me insight into where what I'm doing right now, building my course, stepping back and where um, and how I can help you hopefully start to think through this to carve out the time. Okay, Teresa, I'm going to I'm going to share what you said. Oh my gosh, yes, the struggle's real. I wish I had a sample weekly schedule to help me structure my time better. It's overwhelming to build even the end of yes, I I completely agree. So I'm going to work on that. Especially Teresa, you're in our coaching group. I'm going to talk about that. I think this next one we're going to talk about is email, but I'm going to talk about it from this point of putting together something like your welcome series. I think that's what I'm going to do. Thank you. I'm like brainstorming. Uh, Teresa, what do you think of that? Tell me if you like that idea. Okay. So your Facebook group, these are my notes for today that I want to talk about. Um, honestly, like this is the thing that I, I want to leave you with. And Teresa, I think that, Teresa, this is funny for you, um, which is like when you step back from your Facebook group, your audience wants to know where you are. But the truth is, as long as you check in and if you say, hey, I'm working on something right now, I'm not going to be here as much, but I will be back in a week or two. It Oh, good, Teresa, we're going to do it. Um, just that you can, you know, we're on these like perceived treadmills and we can step back. And our people might really miss us, but we'll be back. And you can still kind of touch little by little, you know, in little ways. But I do think it is going to be about taking that time to build out our funnels and our products and the, then the journeys, really the journeys, mapping them out. And by the way, they I'm going to repeat this. They hurt your brain to put together, but it's worth it because it's easier to go. I'll just put this up on Instagram. Yay. I've done my work for the day. It's much harder to do the heavy lifting, the stepping back, the planning, the figuring out how do I build this piece? What if it doesn't work? All the doubting voices. So I think I'm going to be talking about that a lot more because the job, your job it, and my job is to move people from engagers to buyers. And that doesn't, again, it's not magic. It doesn't just happen because you show up in your Facebook group. It just doesn't. You have to help people understand what you offer, the value of it. You need to, them to trust you enough that they're going to open up their wallets and they're going to pay you. And you have to deliver. Like you have to be believing in yourself, believing that you can provide value. These are all different things and it's hard to line them all up, especially the stuff where we have to believe in ourselves and what we offer, but it is so worth it. So I feel like I'm, I'm getting, I don't know, a, um, a big insight today. So thank you guys for that. All right. In your Facebook group, those of you with Facebook groups like me, like the thing that I love about a Facebook group is the connection. I really do. My this Facebook group is filled with such lovely people. I I never I've not had to be like a bad cop at all. I'm always so impressed with the kindness. And it it fuels me during the pandemic, you know, when we were at the height of it and I was terrified. Um it, it's really been being able to show up in this group and people show up too. And and showing up in other people's Facebook groups and just I don't know, like I know there's a lot of bad stuff on the internet, but when you can find pockets that are really nice, you know, they, they really are and they can feed you. Like the internet is not just good or bad. And in many ways, I think it's like the best thing ever. So this is an example of that. Okay, one thing that you get to do in your Facebook group is ask people questions, ask them what they're struggling with. And in your Facebook group, do use those questions when people join your group where one, you can collect their email addresses and two, ask them. And this was directly from Christina. And she said, 
asked them and I've changed my questions. I had something similar, but I changed it to this. The number one question you have as it relates to X versus I always say like, what are you struggling with? And I think broadening it and just saying like, what is your biggest question about this? Uh, so, okay, Nikki, I agree. We made a lot, let's see. Made lots of great connections who also referred us in their other the other groups they're in that is terrific because you can't buy that like that is real that means you're providing real value and then the next piece is just filling figuring out how to take that person and get them to book a trip with you or do something like that but that might be happening but is there a way to make that even more here's the word intentional so just be thinking about that okay more notes that I want to get there. Um, so then we talked about growing our Facebook groups. And uh, I, of course, wish my Facebook group were growing faster than it is. If you guys have any tips that you want to share for growing your Facebook group, I would love them. And we talked about, though, uh, that it is harder today just to randomly put your Facebook group up and expect people to find it and join. There needs to be a value proposition. And this is an area that I'm thinking about, like, how can I make that even stronger? What is the value proposition? Rather than just like, let's hang out and talk about blogging, but really like articulating that. And so there are ways to grow your Facebook group intentionally. One thing is offer a freebie. And then when you deliver it on the thank you page, put a link to your Facebook uh, group and say, please join. Or, and you can run ads for that. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that immediately, but if uh, people in your Facebook group are really valuable to you. It's worth doing that. And another way you can do it is, and this I like, is collaborating with other people with Facebook groups. You go in their Facebook group, you know, they come into your Facebook group and you're able to then cross promote or cross promote each other's freebies. And if somebody else is, is promoting your freebie and then you're directing people to join your Facebook group, it's kind of like finding ways to cross pollinate. And I love that idea because, again, I think that we um, we are lurkers on the Internet and we're checking out our competition and we're feeling, I don't know, lots of different feelings, some of them not great, like jealousy or inadequacy or who knows. And I always believe if it is possible to befriend people in your space, and I'm not going to call them your competition, I'm just going to say in your space, if you believe in abundance, the internet's a really big place, there is room for all of us, then I can befriend my competition and we can work together to grow our audiences to help each other. And so if you start to kind of do that mindset shift, one, it gets you from the out of the place of scarcity, like uh, she or he is doing better than I am. And why is that? And there must be something wrong with me rather than, hey, I really admire what you're doing. And can we work together to build this? So just be thinking about that as a mindset shift. I think that's really important. So again, collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. And this is one that I really like. And again, this is for Teresa. This is for Nikki. This is for me. What is the transformation? So Teresa, if I'm thinking about you, what is the transformation for somebody to join your group or to join your membership? Like where, what is, what is it about them? Are they going to become artists? Are they going to tap into a part of their creativity? Are they going to feel good about themselves? What is the transformation? So it's not just the nuts and bolts. Like, I'm going to teach you how uh, to use the Gutenberg editor in WordPress. What about I'm going to help you launch your blog and your business so you can change your life? That's the transformation. The way we get there is by understanding WordPress, but the bigger um, picture is what is it? What emotion can I elicit? Uh, for, okay. So Teresa, for my viewers, it has been community. So that's what they are wanting in your group. Let me know what you're thinking. Anyway. Um, so think about when you're, because I'm, I'm now going to um, really uh, recommend we all take some time to think through how we build out our businesses. And at the core is the transformation. 
and how, and then your, what you're teaching is how to get there. So that's how I, I think about it. So again, WordPress is a way to build a business. WordPress in and of itself doesn't build your business, doesn't change your life, doesn't make you money. It's by using the tool of WordPress and doing it with confidence that you can then put content out in the world, attract an audience and figure out then how to monetize. So just, and then change your life. It's not, it doesn't, doesn't just end there. It changes your life because you can put food on your table. You can uh, quit your job. You can take care of your children. That is the place where that's what you want to be talking about. Okay. And similarly, Christina and I talked a lot about this, which is you want to sell with experiences. So you want, yes. Okay, wait, Teresa. Um, what you want to do is like do a challenge, do something where you can get your people to move just a little bit to see that if they come with you, that transformation is real and you know how to get them there. And if you can do it in a small bite of it and show them and go, hey, let's work on this little piece and I'm going to get you there. And if you come with me, we're, we're going to have success. Wow. You've impacted people's lives. That's the thing that I, again, love is that I hopefully get to, I don't know, guide people and help them support them, believe in them so that they can change their lives. So that's, so it's not just again, putting out content, it's connecting the dots. Okay, and so wait, um, learn. let me see, what did Teresa, yes, and, and to learn how I do what I do in painting, but primarily community and friendship. That's it, I love that. I And with creativity, you know? And my hunch is that your community of painters might not paint if they weren't there with you. And so you're helping facilitate them feeling like they can tap into that part of them that is creative because you believe in them. You believe in them as creators. And I think a lot of times we doubt ourselves and think, oh, no, I'm not really that good. But, but just by you holding the space for them to be creative is so powerful. So think about what it is that comes to you effortlessly that might not come to somebody else effortlessly. And that's what I like to call your special sauce. The thing that that other people, that where you can, again, help somebody better their life. I mean, honestly, I feel like, isn't that what we're all here for? Is just to make somebody else's path just a little bit lighter, a little bit easier. Shine the light, shine the light, shine the light. I have a 14-year-old daughter and I tell her that all the time, that her job for people in her life is just shine the light, you know, and it takes the light off of ourselves. And I think that's a healthy thing because I think a lot of times we do shine the light on ourselves and that's not always a good thing because we can highlight things about ourselves we don't necessarily like. So if we can turn the light from ourselves to others, I feel like that's what it's all about. So that's what I wanted to share today. So I'm excited because I am putting together today the sales page for my course. And I'm like kind of building, I am doing all the different pieces. So this, for example, is the workbook that I've put together that I lead people through in the course of the course. I've recorded all the episodes. I've created the handout. I'm putting together the sales page today. I'm working on my emails. And I really believe in it because I think that my audience, this audience is predominantly women. And we aren't like, wow, we love the technology, we have to kind of deal with the technology to do what we want to do. And I want to help then people get comfortable with WordPress and how to think about it and how to come up with ideas for posts, so that they don't have to second guess themselves. And that they have things like this that they can use over and over again in writing blog posts and knowing exactly what to do. So I'm super excited about this. So I'm going to be popping in and starting to now come out of my kind of um, hibernation, it's not hibernation as much as it is building, I guess, building in my little bubble so that I can then come out and share it with the world. And I'm very excited. And the other thing that Christina talks about, and I am such a believer in this, is you launch it and you learn. 
So the first time you launch anything, assume it's not going to work, but assume there's there are lessons in there, but you have to be open to learning, to go what didn't work and why didn't it work and asking for feedback. If, by the way, you want to be a beta tester of my course, just leave a comment here because I'm going to give it uh, to a couple people really cheap. I'm going to sell it really cheaply. Notice I'm selling it, but at a very reduced price. Um, I want to sell it because I want people to have skin in the game. I don't, I, I always recommend this get when people take out their credit card and pay, they've got skin in the game and they're more apt to do it. So just uh, think about that, you know, and we'll see how it goes, but I'm, I'm rolling it out to some beta testers. So if you want to be one, put a comment in uh, the in the comments, and I will reach out to you so that uh, you could try it because I'd love you to. So that's what I wanted to talk about. Again, if you're watching the replay, oh great, Teresa, I will put you on the list. Um, if you are watching the replay, just say hashtag replay. If you'd like to be part of the WordPress, uh, my WordPress course, just put your name there. Oh, hello, Kathleen. It's so good to see you. Um, and if you have questions or anything for me, let me know. But I think that based on, and you could tell me your feedback on this, based on this conversation, um, which is really me with a bunch of people leaving comments, I think that I am going to create an experience in this group where I help lead people to build out one very small piece of their business. And I'm going to probably put a, um, I will put a poll to say like, is it email? Would it be a blog series? Would it be a course or some, or an experience or something where I help people and hold them accountable to actually create something? A piece so that we're not just all on this treadmill of putting content out that isn't intentional. That's just to kind of feed the machine and think that we're building community and think that we're building our brands, but those things can be kind of amorphous and we can get lost doing all of that, that we forget that we are actual businesses who need to be very strategic and intentional about monetizing. So let me know if that sounds interesting to you guys. And I just want to say thank you for showing up. I always love doing this on Mondays. It kind of feeds my soul. So hopefully features as well. And I will be popping in again soon to talk about WordPress um, and the transformation. You learn how to use WordPress, you write blog posts, you serve your audience, you touch people's lives, and then they pay you for solutions to their problems because you understand. So that's what I want to leave you with. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.